Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today I'm going to talk about the fundamental problem with quote unquote progressive storytelling. And really it's the fundamental problem of all progressivism. And I'm going to do it by looking at some of the statements made by Dan Slott over this last week. Dan Slott is an older comic book pro. And if you're into the comic book scene, you probably heard what he has said by other commentators commenting on it. Honestly, I'm not going to talk about Dan Slott himself. The reason why he puts ridiculous things up on the internet is to get attention for himself. So let's not do that. I can honestly just call him Comic Pro X here and have the same effect. But before I get there, I just want to remind everyone that there is a link in the description, two links actually, and on the pinned comment for my three graphic novels that you can order, two superhero graphic novels, Thomas Valiant and the Valiant Heroes, both available at the Valiant Heroes Indiegogo page, and my return to form for low fantasy, which is Crom the Destroyer. All of these stories focus on traditional storytelling, heroic individuals, and touch on themes like death, honor, virtue, all these kinds of things that a traditional hero and story should give you. For example, my Return to Form for Low Fantasy, Crom the Destroyer, is about a elderly king, not too elderly, but he's still fighting on the battlefield, looking for an honorable death, and things go a little bit sideways on him. And that's how you start the story, on a battlefield. So I give you entertainment, fun, and action right from page one. And you're looking at some of the beautiful art from those graphic novels in the background. So if any of that looks or sounds appealing to you at all, click on those links in the description or the pinned comment and go on over and order yourself a copy of one of my graphic novels today. All right, so as I said, I'm not going to concentrate on Comic Pro X, although I will put up those tweets that he made over the last week in the background just this once, and I will read them out for those people who are only listening to my voice. And it's fairly short, so it won't take very long. Comic Pro X says... It is impossible to ruin slash destroy a long-standing legacy character. If an iconic character's been around for 50 plus years, they're indestructible. Whatever current aspect slash storyline displeases you as a fan can be hand-waved away down the road. The character you love will be fine. And then he gives a faux quote as, but what if I don't want to wait that long, unquote? He says, if a legacy character has been around for 50 plus years, chances are good that there are hundreds, if not thousands of stories about them in various media you haven't read slash seen slash experienced yet. More than enough to tide you over. And then he gives another faux quote of, but the current storyline hurts and disrespects the character. I'm defending them, close quotes. And then he says, for a character to stay vital slash fresh, especially one that's been around for 50 plus years, storytellers have to take risks and try things that haven't been done with that character before. And whenever that happens, whatever ways these stories deviate from the norm will inevitably upset a number of the hardcore fans. Conversely, they could also excite other parts of the base and catch the attention of new fans. These deviations are necessary time to time. Without these wild swings and stories that take big risks, there'd be the danger of the property growing stale and predictable. And again, for a character to have survived so long, there's the knowledge a reboot, a reinvention, a hand wave could put all the toys back in the box. Despite any hysterionics, there's always the knowledge that the fan base that existed before you felt the exact same way over a previous story or status quo. And guess what? That character we all know and love is still here and still thriving. They're going to be okay. Also, if you think a storyline has, quote, broken your favorite character for, quote, all time, and you can't come up with an idea for a story that would fix that, then your fan powers are lacking because I guarantee you there are hundreds, if not thousands, of fans who can come up with a fix. And he does give one answer to one comment on this thread. Somebody says, Marvel managed to do this with Spider-Man when they made One More Day, the amazing spider teenager forever. And Comic Pro X responds, impossible, because a fan told me Marvel had already managed to do that with the Clone Saga. And when I got in my time machine, another fan told me Marvel managed to do that with the death of Gwen Stacy, and so on. It's amazing how many times Marvel has managed to do this. Okay, so that's the end of that from Comic Pro X. But here's really the point of the entire thing. 
There is something here that he says that fundamentally breaks down to its core what progressive storytelling is, quote-unquote progressive, and it leads back into exactly what, quote-unquote, progressive ideology itself is. And why, of course, both progressive ideology and progressive storytelling simply do not work. It's all really summed up in the statements, for a character to stay vital fresh, especially one that's been around for 50 plus years, storytellers have to take risks and try things that haven't been done with that character before. And whenever this happens, whatever ways those stories deviate from the norm will inevitably upset a number of the hardcore fans. Conversely, they could also excite other parts of the base and catch the attention of new fans. These deviations are necessary time to time. Without those wild swings and stories that take big risks, there'd be the danger of the property growing stale and predictable. This gets to the very heart of progressivism, and again, why progressive storytelling doesn't work. Why? Because it gets to the heart of how a progressive person understands a human being and how it deviates from what the traditional way, especially within Western civilization, of viewing a human being is. Now, I'm going to, hopefully, flash something up on the screen in the background to show you exactly what I mean, but I'm going to explain it anyway so you don't need to actually see the screen. On the left-hand side of the screen, you have a cog, a cog from a machine. Usually we use this nowadays for settings on your phone or for your computer, things like that. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you have Michelangelo's David. People on the left-hand side of the spectrum, your quote-unquote progressive people and the like, see you as an individual, as simply a cog in a machine. Whereas the people on the right, the traditionalists, see you as an individual, or at the very least should if they're actually supposed to be on the right, see you more as Michelangelo's David. Now, what do I mean by all this? Well, I mean the fact that for the people on the left, especially your progressives, there is no such thing as real individuality. You are a cog in a machine, and so is every other individual. That is to say, there is no difference between you and any other individual. You can be swapped out, like a cog in a machine, with another cog in a machine. There is no actual difference between you and anybody else. But for a traditionalist, the person who thinks in traditional ways, especially, again, for Western civilization, and if you're claiming to be on the right, then yes, you should be a traditionalist. So for the people on the right, you are a unique individual. Every last single person in history, it doesn't matter whether it was ancient history or now or in the future, is a unique person. There will never be another you no matter what happened. And this is all based upon, as most of Western civilization is, Christian ideas and the Christian idea of the soul. And the fact that you have a soul, and it is a unique thing, and it will never be repeated, and not only that, but that that soul is eternal, because in having an eternal soul, you have, not only as it's constructed, but as it exists, the infinite ability to make choices. And so, even if you start off in a place which is extremely similar to another individual, A, you're not the same, you're a unique individual, and B, every choice you make makes you more and more unique, and you can make an infinite amount of choices. And as I said, that begins from the very start. Even though, on the right, you believe that human beings have a nature, and that you start from a human nature, everybody who is a human being has a human nature, and it's a fixed, unchangeable thing, from that point, you become a unique individual. But again, for the people on the left, there is no real individuality, and this is why they can group people according to their class, according to, let's say, their skin tone, or whether or not they're male or female. It doesn't matter. They can classify everybody according to a class, and you can be put in that class and judged according to that class because you, as an individual, really don't matter. And so how does this all play into the storytelling that I'm talking about? Well, here's the thing. If you have individuals or representations of individuals down on a page in a story, no matter what kind of story that you have, and you don't even treat actual human beings as if they were unique individuals, then obviously you're not going to treat these characters down on a page as unique individuals either. Therefore, in order to move a story along, in order to keep it 
fresh, as Comic Pro X says, and vital, which means alive, you have to introduce elements that, as he says, deviate from the norm. And as he later says, these deviations are necessary, especially if they're trying to, and I quote, catch the attention of new fans. Or again, he wraps it up by saying, without these wild swings and stories that take big risks, there'd be the danger of the property growing stale and predictable. So what he's saying is that you keep a character alive for that long by introducing these new radical elements to the storyline every once in a while in order to keep it alive. Why do you need to introduce these radical new elements? Why? Because the representation of the individual is not a unique thing. It is not something that is going to hold the audience's attention on its own. Because again, they don't even believe that normal human beings are indeed individuals in the sense that they are unique. No, they're cogs in a machine that can be classified according to groups. So it is the same with their representation on the page. And this works out in storytelling in very interesting ways that I'll go over in a minute. But let's look at the other side of the coin. Let's look at the traditional way of looking at a human being and how it expresses itself within a story. If you have a traditional way of looking at a human being, and you think that every human being is uniquely individual, and besides that, they have the capacity to make an infinite amount of choices, then all you gotta do in order to keep a story vital and fresh, that is to say alive, is to represent that human being down on the page as if they were an actual human being, which is what storytelling is supposed to do because those individuals can make an infinite amount of choices and can do so according to the uniqueness of them as human beings individual. And as such, you will always keep that story fresh and alive, simply by doing the exact thing that you're supposed to do to make a story, which is to make it a representation of reality and your character's representations of real human beings. And as I said, this is why you have these people on the left, these quote unquote progressives right now, continually putting everybody into a class, saying, well, you're a part of whiteness, and therefore you can never change that. Why can you never change that? Because it doesn't matter what choices you make, you can't escape that because you're not an actual individual, not as we understand it, according to traditional norms. You're not something unique. You're not something that can make an infinite amount of choices. No, you are confined by your class or by your skin color or by your gender or anything else that they deem to be a foundational principle within their ideology, which again, all just comes back to power. This is also why when we're talking about comic books and other stories that I talk about on my channel, when they talk about justice, they talk about social justice. Now there is an idea, an ancient idea of something like social justice. It is the common wheel, but that common wheel is always based upon individual justice. If individual justice doesn't exist, then you can't have social justice. But these people, these social justice warriors of today, these quote unquote progressive people, they try to eliminate any individual justice at all and concentrate completely on social justice, which again is a flipping over of the entire Christian ideal and destroys the entire idea of justice completely and utterly. And it's because again, they don't believe in individual justice because they don't believe in individuals as unique things. Individuals can simply be put into classes because you're just a cog in a machine. So the point being, in politics and in storytelling, these quote unquote progressive people try to do the exact same thing. Because they view human beings as something that can be put into classes, they have to radically alter the conditions around them to try and make it look like there is a vitality to what they are doing, when honestly it is killing any kind of vitality at all. Why? because it kills the individual, and the individual is the one who makes those choices towards getting to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And what more, as I always say, it is that individual and that individuality is needed for true heroism because that's where it comes from. It comes from the virtues of prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance. Those are things which individually are chosen by each 
person by themselves. But again, back to how this affects story and what Comic Bro X is talking about. Now you see, what he's talking about is that things can be waved away with the back of their hand if they just want to reset the character. But that's not a way a human being actually works. Again, because they don't believe that those human beings are indeed true individuals. You would say, and I would say, no, you can't do that. Why? Because of continuity. And continuity is something that he just says here can be waved away. And this is something that occurs within modern storytelling all over the place. They don't care if a modern story agrees with the historical parts of the story that have been told. And quite honestly, if you're looking at something like comic books, you know that they don't even care about continuity within the last issue that they published in this one. Or even the panels and the pages of the same book that they just wrote. There doesn't have to be continuity with the first of the book and the end of the book. You can see that within progressive storytelling. Why? Because they don't need continuity. Why? Because it's not about continuity. Why? Because there doesn't need to be any kind of attachment to the past, because all you need to keep a story quote-unquote vital is to introduce radical new ideas into it. And as I said, as someone on the right, I would say that's complete bollocks, because what you do in order to write a good story is to incorporate that continuity that you already seen, because that's the way a human being actually works, and what you're putting down here on a page as a character should be a representation of reality and work as if they were a real human being, not to mention how the universe itself works and there should be continuity there. And this is exactly what that person who is responding to Comic Pro X and who gave that one response back was saying to him. They were saying, this is what happened with One More Day. You killed that character with that storyline by taking it and making sure that he was a perpetual teenager and could never get out of that phase. That's not continuity. That's not the way a human being works. Therefore, you destroyed the character. It's no longer a character, as I have said so many times on my channel. For these quote-unquote progressive people, they don't write characters. They write characters ideas in the mask as if they were a character. They can't write actual individual characters because they don't know what a human being is because they don't think human beings are unique things. And yes, they did destroy that character of Peter Parker with that storyline because this is not how an actual human being works. An actual human being does not become a perpetual teenager, and if they do, they have to deal with the consequences of it because it's not going to work out well for them. And let's just, for a second, go into the history both of Marvel Comics and of storytelling itself to see why this destruction of continuity is obliterating the story. Well, if you go back to, I would say, probably the most conservative person to work at Marvel Comics, that would be Jim Shooter. He's the one who got that ship in order so that they could become the powerhouse they were. And how did he do it? He did it through emphasis on continuity. He was working for DC prior to that, and he said to his editor, look, Marvel is beating the pants off of us because they're using continuity. I'm writing Legion of Superheroes right now. How's about I put in some continuity? And his editors told him, no, we don't do that here at DC. And Marvel continued to beat the pants off of them decade after decade in sales. And when Shooter took over Marvel, he knew this exactly. And so he made sure that continuity was something that was followed and was actually a reflection of reality. He tells the story of when Chris Claremont wrote the Dark Phoenix saga. And at the end of that story, Chris Claremont wanted to reset everything and just put all the X-Men back to where they were at the beginning, which would be more of a DC style story element to just reset everything after this major event happened. And he said, no, you can't do that. That's not going to happen within this comic. Why? Because it's not how human beings actually work. It's not continuity. You have this individual, Jean Grey, as Phoenix. She just obliterated an entire planet's worth of people. You don't get to reset her back to, oh, I'm just a student here in Westchester. It doesn't work that way. A human being does not work that way. Therefore, it makes it a bad story. And Chris Claremont argued with him and said, you have some kind of moral imperative here. And he had to, again, stress the fact that, no, 
I'm simply showing you this is a bad story. Now, first of all, I would say, yeah, kinda, he did have a moral imperative there, not in that he wanted to push some kind of morality, but the fact that actual continuity that follows the way that human beings are supposed to act, it does point towards morality, because again, it does point towards the fact that, yes, in the operating system, that is to say the human nature, there is some things that allow you to be fulfilled and some things that take you away from that, which is to say there are some things you can say morally are good and morally lead you into a bad place. And by the way, this is why, one of the core reasons why your quote unquote progressives hate this kind of idea. It's because they want to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it with no rules in the way to tell them that they can't. And to go back to something like a human nature, which then flowers into the uniqueness of the individual that I'm talking about, that says, no, there are some actions that are not right because human beings don't act that way and just get to get away with it scot-free. And funny enough, or really, I would say, to the credit of Jim Shooter, what he was doing was just expressing the Aristotelian way, which is logical and rational, of how to actually tell a story which he set down in the 4th century BC and continued on for thousands of years right up until his point. It was to say that the worst kind of story is episodic. What would you say is episodic? Well, the DC form of stories that Jim Shooter used to work on, that's episodic. That is, you have a story and then when it ends you just reset everything back to the starting point again, so it doesn't matter if one comic comes after another, one story comes after another, that was the entire point of DC at that time. It didn't matter how many Superman comics you had, you could read them in any order you want because none of them touched any of the other because it was always at the end reset back to the first. That's episodic. And Aristotle's logical, rational reason for saying that episodic is the worst kind of story is to say that in order for a human being to make sense of something, he needs to be able to first of all take it all in with his eye, or if it's your imagination in your mind's eye, you need to be able to take the entire thing in, and then as you're taking the entire thing in, you need to be able to make sense of it to understand it. In order to do that, there needs to be an order to it. In order for that order to be there, there has to be a continuity of how those parts actually fit together, which is to say they need to go one, two, three, four, five if there's five different things. Or again, you could switch it around, go five, four, three, two, one. It doesn't matter. It needs to have an order to it so that the human mind can perceive it and then distinguish between the parts and the whole, see how each of them relate to each other. That's how you understand a story. And episodic destroys that entire thing by saying you can have events that can go in any order you want, it doesn't matter. And that goes right back to the old, and I'm not sure people follow this anymore, but it's the old standard of actually writing something. When you work with an editor, an editor would say to you, well, you see, this line of dialogue here, if you can put it in any one of the characters' mouths, then it doesn't belong there. You either need to rewrite this line of dialogue so that it belongs to someone particularly, or get rid of it. Why? Because you're writing things episodically, and that's a bad story. Aristotle understood this. Writers throughout history have understood this, Jim Shooter understood this, but after he left and it started to degrade more and more, and I would say right into the 90s, it started to become this episodic type of storytelling where continuity really didn't matter that much right up until today where continuity doesn't matter one whit, and we've gone back to just episodic comics where you can just, as Comic Pro X says, wave this Last thing away with the back of your hand and fit the parts back together any which way you want. That's a bad story. And another thing with all of this quote unquote progressive storytelling, this is why you have these people, these quote unquote progressive storytellers, constantly trying to introduce radical new elements into a storyline. Because quite honestly, they have killed their patient, which is their character, and all they're doing is trying to shock it back to life with these radical ideas that they put in over and over again. And when that body jumps because they've just shocked it with electricity, they say, oh look, it's alive. No, it's not. You killed it. By smothering the idea of a unique individual, you have killed not only this character, but every character you have ever touched. But the point being, as I said, this is why they introduced these radical new ideas. This is why when I was covering, oh, what was it, six years ago, that old 
interview with Sana Amina she did with Fast Company, she said literally within that interview, people might think they want those old stories, but they really don't. What was she saying? She was saying that you can't do this same story over and over again. You need these radical new elements, and that's what's going to keep it alive. The same thing as Comic Pro X is saying here. She just said it in a different way. Because again, neither of them think of human beings as actual individuals because they're both heavy progressives, just like everyone else who writes stories within the mainstream entertainment system right now. And the point of why they constantly want to gender swap, race swap, all of these characters is because, first of all, within this quote unquote progressive ideology, they still believe that there is systemic oppression of people of different kinds of lifestyles and that it's all over the place and therefore it's a radical new thing to keep the story alive, so-called, by introducing this radical new element to it. Which is really quite funny because whenever you hear these people speak, listen to them talk and give actual interviews, they say things like, we had plans to change this character radically by changing their gender or their sexuality or something like that, and we thought it was a radical new thing, but when we did it, we didn't get any pushback. That really surprised us. Of course you didn't get any pushback. First of all, because everyone within the system that you're in already acknowledges those things as being a good, so it's not radical at all. Not to them, anyways. So they just allow them to do it. But again, the point being that they do this and try to do it over and over again because they believe it's a radical new thing to do because they believe that the only way to keep a story alive is to introduce radical elements because they don't see individuals as actual people, as actual unique things, and so characters are the same. They're just a cog in a machine that you have to poke with electricity every once in a while and make it jump as a way to try to show that it's still alive. And this is also why we have that annoying phrase of made for modern audience. What does, at its heart, made for modern audiences mean? It means that they believe, as progressives, that this is the way things exist, this is the way that individuals exist, but now we have audiences which also recognize that, and so we're going to give the audience exactly what they really want, even though they don't think they want it, as again, Sana Amina would say, but give those audiences what they want by giving them a portrayal of quote-unquote characters, which are nothing more than ideas in a mask, and shocking them with these radical ideas again and again, so-called, in order to try to make the thing look like it's alive. But it's not. And again, if you want a living story, do exactly what you're supposed to do within traditional storytelling, which is make it a reflection of reality and your characters reflections of actual people who are actual unique individuals. And once again, the funny thing here is the fact that, well, it used to be, back when I studied political science, it used to be an axiom that we would use to try to understand what was going on and why historical events happened at certain times and people defended certain ideas at certain times. One of the axioms that we would use, it's not always true, but it was true a lot of the time. When you see a person trying to defend something, you already know that it's too late for the thing that they're trying to defend. Why? Because they've gotten to a point where it's been attacked so much that they usually, as lazy human beings that we are, don't get around to defending it until it's too late. And that's exactly what we see here with Comic Pro X. He's saying you can't kill these legacy characters. Why is he saying that? Because he can really, in the back of his mind, it doesn't matter if it's instinctual or something of that kind, but he can see and he knows very well because, again, we're human beings and we understand fundamentally what a human being is, no matter how many ideological strains you try to cover that over with, he understands that they have, have indeed killed these legacy characters. And again, he's trying to defend the idea that no, they haven't killed it because you need these radical new things that are shocking the system of those kinds of stories over and over again. And that shows that it's still alive. That shows that it's vital. No, it doesn't. All that you've just done within the statement is lay out the exact reason why you have indeed killed all of these characters. And quite honestly, you can see the exact same thing playing out within our politics right now. All of the things that are concerning Western civilization because 
These radical ideas have been brought in and are causing havoc. They have this exact idea at their heart. The idea of this mass movement of people into countries over borders. Why has that become a thing? Why? Because they want to replace you and the worker class with another class, and they can do that with more cogs that they import from someone else because you, as a worker, can be replaced like a cog in a machine. Why do they have these people who think that they can change who they are on a dime just by thinking it? Why? Because they don't think that there is an individual difference between me and another person, between a male and a female, because there's no difference between individuals. This is why they come up with these so-called radical ideas where if we want to save the planet, we have to get rid of some of the people that live here. Why? Because the more people you have, the more cogs in the machine you have, and the more oil you have to use on them to grease the machine, and they're just a consumer of the products and just a drain on the entire system as it is. Why? Because again, they think about them as nothing more than cogs in a machine. But if you look at it according to the traditional way of looking at it, within the idea that each individual is a unique thing, you would say, no, no, we need actually more people. All you got to do is take those more people and train them to be actual individuals with unique ideas on their own, which you can do by just treating them with respect and as actual human beings. And then you have a multitude of more people who can take their brains and apply their brain power to solving the problem, which will then, again, with their infinite ability to come up with new things, be able to do so. And I could go on and on and on like this, because it all comes back to this fundamental point, which is exactly the same within their storytelling. And when you break it down to its fundamental principles of the idea of the strain of thinking, you can see exactly where it comes from. It's because these quote-unquote progressive people have become enslaved to this erroneous idea that individuals are not unique, that they can all be classified according to one thing or another, and that you and I and everyone else are nothing more than a replaceable cog in a machine. So, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about all this. And don't forget, there are two links in the description and on the pinned comment for my three graphic novels, written in a traditional storytelling method, and trying to express those characters in the unique fashion that I have just described here. So if any of that looks or sounds appealing to you at all, click on those links in the description or the pinned comment and go on over and order one of my graphic novels today. All right, I'll leave it there. I'll see you later. Bye.